As mentioned earlier, I'm now joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Frederick Hardy, uh, motorsport photographer extraordinaire. And uh, he's gonna ask, answer some questions that I got on my Instagram story, and then just some general questions that I have. So first off, a whole bunch of people ask Fred, like, how did you get started doing this, obviously? Uh, right? That's the big one. Really, I was a spectator. So like, mm -hmm. I would buy a ticket, I'd camp out at the track, and I just shot photos as a fan for several, several years. And uh, I built my portfolio up that way, and then after that, I kind of, pitched to like teams, agencies, and got a lot of no's. And then I finally got a yes, and somebody took a shot on me, and um, that's pretty much, like that was my first, that was my end, really. Mm -hmm. And so I worked with them for a few years, and then uh, stepped out on my own, and just kept going from there. But really, like, you can't shoot race cars on the couch. <laughs> so <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing, is we always tell people, it's another person that started, like, just as a fan, yeah. going to races. Like, we tell them, just buy tickets, go to races. Like, you don't need, you know, credentials from the get-go. You can go and build a portfolio. Like, a lot of the racetracks for IMSA and SRO in the U.S. are, like, so fan-friendly for yeah. doing photography. Yeah, and my thing is, it's like, if you can shoot a really dope photo from a fan area with no access, then when you actually do have access, like you should be A-OK, -okay. like you'll be fine. But honestly, I mean, you're, you can probably uh, testify to this as well. Like even with a credential, we find ourselves in the fan area shooting pretty yep. often, so. Like even uh, here at Laguna, I think some of the best shooting in the corkscrew is like from the fan area. Yeah, honestly. I, I didn't even go, when I was up the corkscrew today, I didn't go in there at all. I was using like the fans in the trees and stuff, so yeah. Um, what else we got? We've got, uh, uh, well, okay, we have, so what did you, before you pursued this, like, what, what was your job before you did motorsport photography? Uh, I was actually a Marine for just short of 12 years. Uh, so I was an optics tech, so basically, uh, anything from day scopes, rifle day scopes, to night vision and thermal, uh, javelin systems, tow systems, tank sites, anything on the ground side you would use to acquire a target, I maintained and fixed. And so that was my MOS, my job, but then I also had a couple secondary billets that kind of carried me through uh, my career in the Marine Corps. So that's pretty much what I did. I had a whole other life. Has that optics helped you with your photography at all? <laughs> like, no, I mean, I mean, I, uh, maybe. I mean, because I. It's super technical, so like when things with like something's like out of focus and like haze and stuff like that, then sure, I'm like I know when and where to kind of waste my time or not waste my time, I should yeah. say. Um, and then I guess like I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I'm just a nerd, really. So like <laughs> this is really what it ends up being. But yeah, uh, yeah, I've been playing with optics for ever now. I guess it seems like so. Yeah. So to take a more serious turn, something I actually really wanted to ask you about is like, you know, if you look around the media center, you're one of the only people of color that does this. Yeah. Is that, is that ever, is that ever like come across your mind or something you've thought about at all? Or is uh, it affecting your job here at all? Or It hasn't, I don't think it's like affect my job. I don't think it's affect my job. I think that, you know, obviously we're in a, we're in anywhere in the world, you're going to encounter like some kind of prejudice or bias or whatever, but uh, it has crossed my mind uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm the only hard-carded yeah. photographer of color, right? Yeah, so, and I think even when you look around the paddock, like, there's not a lot of drivers, you know, right. crew members for sure, but, like, I think we, we definitely have, like, not a lot of, you know, black drivers or right. you know, just diverse drivers in general. For sure, and yeah. so, like, uh, I mean, with that, I mean, it's kind of like some onus on that, like for me to not go out and like be an idiot and then like really just kind of represent not only just as a photographer, but like to show that, that one, it is possible. And then two, like be an example, like don't go out here and be a clown and doing crazy stuff like that, but like let the work speak uh, and, and, and just be positive to whoever it is I encounter, regardless, right? So, um, but, you know, things are growing, things are changing, we're seeing more drivers, we're seeing more media, we're seeing more people in PR staff, and we're, you know, it's all changing and evolving. 
um, which is a huge plus, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's and it's, it's not only in just this industry, in the food photography world, those that don't know, I'm also a food photographer. Um, I was like the first black staff food photographer, and that place has been in business for decades. Yeah. So like, <laughs> it's not that, you know, folks of color don't like photography, it's just, yeah. you know, it's, when you don't see someone that looks like you right. doing it, you don't it makes try. you you don't think about it. it doesn't even <laughs> yeah. cross your mind. Right. right. Yeah. You just don't try. So yeah. I mean Yeah, I mean it's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. So one of the one of the other questions we got is Christina wanted to know if we've left you at the track again yet. I have not been left at the track. <laughs> Jamie almost did it last. Actually, I almost left him yesterday. He was taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Greg wanted to know, like, if it, it was if his life goal was to like have like half the coolness of Fred Hardy, where would, <laughs> where would he start? Uh, <laughs> dope music. I mean, uh, what was it? Uh, we should talk about that actually. So JP was with us in Long Beach, yeah, and he and you were like schooling him a little bit on yeah. music because like yeah. you're very you're very musical. I was schooling Jared actually on music on the way here yesterday because <laughs> he doesn't really know a lot about music, and I was like going through all these bands I like and explaining shit. So right. like, so like, how passionate are you about music? Uh, I love music. Yeah. It's always playing. Uh, I played the trombone, which isn't the most sexy instrument uh, growing mean, up. It's fine, but uh, but uh, it's it's everything. I grew up. My parents were big into music. My mm -hmm. wife is big into music. My kids are into music, and uh, it's it's everything to me, man. Like I I can change my entire mood. I can dictate my day and how I feel off of what uh, I'm listening to. I often like we'll play certain playlists to see how I shoot yeah which is kind of weird like because it'll put me in like a mood and a vibe and some stuff I yeah. might not try so I, I listened to music tracks out a few times in the yeah. past and I found like it definitely made me feel like a certain way right but then I kind of I got out of doing it just because like I don't know it felt weird it felt unsafe to me I was like no, I should probably yeah, yeah. not be listening to music to, tracks you on. have to you have to use it like definitely yeah. like pit lane no no like definitely not. <laughs> you know but like uh, like today, I was shooting some stuff. Like I was standing in like some trees and in, in like empty parking lots or parts of the parking lot, whatever. Yeah, 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 driving. Yeah. So like I would just have stuff playing. But uh, yeah, the music thing is just like it's it's essential. Like I have yeah. to have it. I have I, to. I, I'm actually like jealous of you guys because you get to listen to music while you edit. I have to listen to the same four seconds of the same song over and over again. And then you guys get to like vibe out while you're editing. So uh, that's a perk. Yeah, it's a good perk of being a still photographer. So speaking of being a still photographer, let's talk a little bit like so what what would you say if you had to pick a fo uh, a focal length for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Oh that's uh, that answer has evolved over the years. Okay. Well, what would it be today? Today, to I mean, fifty. I, I can, Correct. It's yeah. fifty. That's what I. And, and Jamie's like, "Ooh, fifty's boring." No, it's fifty. No, fifty is pretty rad. You get a fifty. Yeah. Like I have a fifty-one two. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I have a fifty-one four. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's, like, it's yeah. ridiculous. So, so I can do a lot with it. Um, but those who know, I love a one thirty-five. Like, yeah. but it could be too tiny. So. One thirty-five is pretty bad. Yeah. yeah but. And so, what is your favorite lens you currently on? Get to pick one. My, my 135, uh, 135, 18. Yeah. Uh, that thing, I like that focal length in general. I wouldn't pick it as like the only one to use because it can be too tight, but uh, it's so sharp, it's super fast, uh, and it, it just renders beautifully. And it's like fall off, it just looks amazing. So, um, and I can, I can count, I, I can look at photos and like, Point at which one is like that one was shot with a 135. It just, yeah, it seems like <laughs> you know when you see it. Yeah. So, what is your favorite aspect of doing this though? Like, what is your favorite aspect of like being the traveling motorsport photographer? Um, I mean, you this job you really have to love the sport. Because the hours are crazy. Um, if you don't negotiate right, the pay is crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, but you have to love it, right? And you meet so many people. And you get to work with so many cool people and be surrounded by like uh, just like the le like a level of talent that's like unmatched. So that helps you grow and you meet 
meet and you have these relationships and it almost becomes like a, a traveling family in a yeah. sense, right? So you, we see each other and, and Yeah, I, I was telling my wife about that. She's like, you know, I don't have a lot of friends at home. I have a couple close friends and I'm like, my friends are like at the racetrack. You know, right. I see them when we go to the races. Right. It's fine. So, so you get like, to go work with your friends. Exactly. It's great. You, know, you <laughs> get to friend. hang out and, you know, we hang out at the house and watch Too Hot to Handle. And, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Right. And then, so you, you have that and then you, you build these relationships with the drivers and that becomes very special so that, like the whole thing is it's a labor of love really yeah. it's really what it becomes so uh, I mean the people is what yeah. make it and then I, I get to play with cameras all day correct like that's pretty rad yeah <laughs> what's your favorite track you've done uh, I really like Road Atlanta and I like VIR VIR has got like a special place that's like kind of where I got started yeah so that is great like, great racetrack for spectator <laughs> photography and like it's it's really cool with like grass on all sides if you're not familiar with VIR google it it's a really cool racetrack it's, yeah, gorgeous. it's, it's gorgeous it's pretty fantastic um it's favorite racetrack um what's the favorite event you've done overall um Long Beach is pretty sick I, that was my first year going this yeah year. it's a lot of fun it's literally like a motorsport wonderland in the middle of a city, like a proper city too. Yeah. So like, um, that that's pretty dope. And I, I only like scrape the surface in terms of like the spots to go and shoot. So I'm pretty excited to go back in future years and kind of explore more and kind of yeah, kind of put my own more of my own spin on what it looks like. Um, it's really dope. Like, so yeah. I think for now that's my favorite. Awesome. Yeah, it's one of my favorites of the year. So I'm always preaching about like how great it is and how everybody should go to it. Especially like if you're from abroad, like and you want to visit the US, like it's not a bad one to go to. Right. I mean you, you can get, also you're in Hollywood, you can also go to Disney or Universal, right. you know, and you can like make a whole thing of it. And exactly. then like while you're there you're getting IndyCar and the SRO this year, jumpy trucks, yeah, drifting and historics. Yeah. Nowhere else that we're doing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's why I love street events because you just bring, it's like a festival that we bring into the city, right? right? And what's the bucket list one? What's one you really want to do? Uh, Nuremberg 24. Same. I haven't done it yet and right. I really want to do it. And yeah. you did Bathurst. That's insane. So yeah, like, it's cool. I haven't, I haven't been to Europe. So yeah, anything in Europe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. If, like, well, hopefully we can get you there in yes. the near future. I hope so too. And I think it will awesome. with time. You gotta be patient. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah the Nuremberg 24, the, the track is just crazy. Mm. I just want to do it once at least. Right? Yeah. So. Do you have a favorite moment, like from from shooting races and stuff, that really sticks out to you? Like something that just felt really special? Uh, As you talked about like the interpersonal relationships with people, is there, has there been a moment that you felt like really special to be able to capture it for someone? Yeah, I mean, so uh, last year was my first season with CrowdStrike, um, and they won championship in the SRO. And then yeah. I, another, I had another client go and win the championship. And so when you follow them for the season, and you're at every single race, and you see like the great times, and you see like the times where it wasn't so dope. Yeah. Uh, for them to come out on top is like really special. I almost feel like a, you, you feel like you won yeah, too, right? And like, you did because you're yeah. part of the team, and we talk about that a lot, Jamie yeah. and I. That you're part of the team. You are. You're the team photographer. Right. You're you're with the team. Like we've yeah. sent spy photos. We've sent photos of damage to the team to help them win. You know things like that. And right. You're part of the team. Uh, and so when you, you you're there for like the big moments, like yeah. it's, it's really special. And especially like you, like I said, you're around the drivers. You're around the crew they all know you yeah and you know them and you start having your, your jokes and stuff so when the day is great you feel great too because you're you're feeling that and it influences your photos and then when it's not so great you're just like oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean that's like that that was that's just like a really cool moment that's yeah really, really cool moment. that's awesome well thanks fred it's oh, been thank fun you, man uh, this we'll, is dope uh, Yes, yeah, so you can follow Fred on Instagram at Fred Hardy Photo. At Fred Hardy Photo on all awesome. platforms. Oh my God, we're joined by James Leeds. Bonus. It's Jamie Price's video editor. <laughs> There he is. I didn't know what I just walked into. <laughs> I was coming to see Fred's cool photos. <laughs>